Coming up on this episode of the Model 3 Owners Club Show, we have some Model 3 production news for you, Tesla delivery updates, some information on Autopilot 2.5, supercharger news, we wouldn't have a show without that, can the EV transition mirror the horse to the Model T? Interesting, yeah, we'll talk about that and some other manufacturer news as well. Yeah, and some more information and mailbag coming up soon. We'll be right back. Thanks, folks, for tuning into this edition of the Model 3 Owners Club Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor. I'm Trevor Page. Thanks for joining us. Hey, we got some really neat uh, information for all of you. Uh, pretty big day. We big just day. surpassed over 10,000 forum members on the Model 3 Owners wow, Club. Wow, I can't believe that. Yeah. Uh, we also want to give a pretty big shout out to our forum moderators, yeah. uh, Melinda, Michael, and, 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 and Brad, and a few others. They do such a great job of keeping the natives in check. <laughs> uh, they do. You know, without that, I, we would not be able to operate. So I want a big, big shout out and big thank you to those folks who do such a great job. Absolutely, uh, you know, they do. Every, everybody I tried helping last time you went on vacation, and like my mind melted so because it was so busy. It's so. a lot of work, but so, uh, anyway, so the forum's off. doing really well, getting a lot of uh, support and stuff, so it's working out really well. So, anyways, just big thanks. So, so moving thank on, uh, we got some Model Three news, Ken. Let's get into Model Three news. Absolutely. Well, I think uh, let's talk. Let's start by looking at the last quarterly results. Of course, we have all heard by now about the less than stellar deliveries for the mm. Model Three that were released. Um, in those last results uh, a few, couple of weeks ago, overall, Tesla is doing well. They're 4.5% up on year-over-year -year deliveries. They're doing well in the S and the they X. Are. They did mm -hmm. a lot of deliveries on those cars for sure, but it's, the Model 3 is falling yeah, a little, they little only, bit behind. They announced they only delivered 220 Model 3s, and again, that does not include cars sitting in lots uh, that are on, on trucks to transport that are in progress for delivery. They only claim it apparently when it's actually been signed taken uh, delivery by the owner correct yeah that's right and that's the, reporting that yeah so they're roughly about 1400 or so <laughs> units off from the tweet that elon did back in july saying you know we're going to do about above 1500 by the end of september and yeah. uh, they're certainly off on that number well they he did say should because should. it's a prediction it's not a promise and that's the problem i think a lot of people yep. look at elon's tweets and they just take it verbatim and say this is exactly what we're going to do but, you know, Elon's an optimistic guy. He tends to throw out these numbers sometimes. Yep. So, anyways, you know, bottlenecks happen. These things mm -hmm. happen. Uh, hopefully, it's just not a year and a half delay like the Model X. I think we're probably looking at a few weeks, maybe a couple of months at the most. It's not the end of the world. But, you know, some of us are really uh, hoping to get these cars in time. So, Well, Elon did say production hell. And he continues to use that term quite on a regular basis. And, he, you know, he did say that there were some production bottlenecks, as you just said, Trev. Um, they've also had some early issues. Um, let's just take one step back and just remind folks why that these initial deliveries are only going to employees and into a specific group of people. Yeah, Ken and I were having this conversation before we started recording the show, and I follow Model X development just as closely as Model 3. Model X is one of my favorite vehicles, and you know, I'm really gaga about that car as well. And Tesla had white seats and five yeah. <laughs> interior. Okay. Anyway, yeah, um, Tesla had a lot of problems with the Model X. I mean, it was delayed a year and a half, and then it took them a year to really ramp up production. Yeah. And they're still having a few issues. You know, they had a just just had a, a recall of eleven thousand of them for problems with the seats. So they're still having some issues with the car, and I think that that is still very fresh in their mind. And and you know, traditionally with the uh, with the Model S and the Model X, when Tesla delivered the cars, they didn't give them to employees. They went straight to customers, right? Mm -hmm. And they had a lot of problems. True. And, you know, when you're looking at a Model 3 that's supposed to be a, quote, mass market car, even though I take exception to that term, mm -hmm. um, you know, the average person is not going to be quite as forgiving. So I understand Tesla wanting to do this differently with the Model 3 and make sure that the cars go to employees first so that they have a tighter uh, feedback loop, if you will. Mm -hmm. Control so, group, basically. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So they can find early production issues and kind of fix them before they go out to general customers. I get that. And of course, and everybody's frustrated right now because of the fact that, you know, they're not allowing videos and they're not allowing pictures and they really want to keep the whole thing on the down low. Mm -hmm. I, I get that. It's, you know, it's frustrating for us too. I yeah. get that. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what's really going on here is is they had some early issues. I mean, they had some condensation in the taillights. I mean, that's that was common in a lot of early mm -hmm. Model S's as well. Uh, you know, they get some bad welds here and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this stuff happens, you know. It's just, there's so many eyeballs on Tesla 
that all this information comes out. But if you looked at GM or Ford and stuff, they, you know, nobody talks about that stuff because kind of, nobody's really interested. And it's a normal kind of practice regarding automotive manufacturing. That's just exactly. part of the, one of the, com- the stages of it. Right? They're complicated machines mm-hmm. to make, you know. Mm-hmm. So you have these early things and, and they might make a fleet of a thousand cars where they sort out these issues. Tesla is doing it differently mm-hmm. in the sense that they're not making a thousand cars to sit somewhere to be crushed. They're mm-hmm. actually giving them or selling them, I should say to uh you know to the employees and and yeah. you know and and um you know officials inside the company yeah so or, it's, it's a different approach mm-hmm. right so yeah. i get it it's just frustrating because you know everybody's demanding information on the mm-hmm. model 3 which you know everybody will deliver in due time we just have to be patient a little bit longer mm-hmm. until you know public delivery starts yeah. so or what happens you know with the other uh you know bigger automobile manufacturers is they they bring out a new model and they ship it and then they do some major recalls after a year or so because they find some issues yeah here's another element where tesla's trying to avoid that scenario by getting these things sorted out you know as quick as they can within that control group yeah you you really don't want to recalls if you can help it that's right i I get it but they've been doing some deliveries right they have yeah they've done some obviously outside outside of california Mm -hmm. uh in texas florida and the northeast coast of the usa and and other places are wrapping up we think there might be a thousand registered vins out there yeah not 100 percent sure Uh, as you said vins may not be sequential yeah it's really important to remember Mm -hmm. that vin numbers are assigned but they're not necessarily in sequence Mm -hmm. like they'll put they'll make a bunch of VIN numbers and stuff and then they'll put them on the cars as they go so and this is not unique to Tesla this has happened to Ford before uh, you know when they had the Mustang first came Mm -hmm. out I was reading you know it's escaping my mind right now but the VINs are not necessarily sequential they're sequential in terms of numbers but they're not necessarily assigned to vehicles in you know as they come off the line this is Mm -hmm. one this is two this is three okay so just keep that in mind that if you see big VIN numbers it could be release candidate it it could be a production car so there's no real way of knowing exactly okay and you know we we are going to continue to follow deliveries, but just reminder that it's really the ramp up numbers. It's the it's the production numbers that they're focusing on, and they still want to hit that five thousand per week by the end of the year. So it's going to be a stretch, but uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Now, of course, all the deliveries to date, as we mentioned, have been to employees and company insiders, um, and you know because as Tess, as Trevor said, they are early they're early production models. They are subject to component changes. They tweak. They find something. Oh, you know, we're getting condensation in the tail light, so let's replace them with a better seal. Whatever the case is, build them a little better. So, and as you mentioned, similar experiences. With with the SNX, so there's no surprises really to what we're seeing. So those of you out there who are really kind of getting upset about this whole process, this is standard Tesla, and and it happens with a lot of well. The, the difference this right? time is that they're doing it. The, the cars are going to employees rather than the customers. Than the customers, exactly. so yeah, it's just yeah. a slightly different variant yeah. on it. But, but production is running, and there was a video that to, that Elon tweeted out a little while ago showing a tenth of a speed. I think that they're running it at a tenth. He put of out speed. two videos mm-hmm. on Instagram. One yep. was the uh, the robots actually doing the welding part, and another one is the, of the new stamping press. You know, showing that they were stamping out the body panels and mm-hmm. stuff. And I think some of that was just to quell some of the the speculation on the internet that yeah. the cars were handmade yeah you know so that's, that's, that's his right. way of just saying uh no yeah. we actually have some automation going on they do and and that automation will increase as oh, they, yeah. they iron out everything well basically. don't forget they, they've it been talking be. about well they've been talking about this alien dreadnought which is basically they want a car factory where there's no human interaction mm-hmm. clawing around the cars and so on and so forth so um it's still early days i don't think this is the full alien dreadnought this no. is kind of like the first version of it and stuff it's so, a ways away yeah we're still probably a couple of years away from, from right. that being realistic so because of these delivery delays that we've seen and the lack of the the numbers being there from a projection we're both uh very easy to call at least mid-november maybe end of november now before we start seeing public deliveries uh, at this point in time, it just seems that they still got a few kinks to work out, and mm-hmm. then hopefully we'll start seeing that. Um, they have opened, or we do predict that they'll open the design studio soon. There's not a whole heck of a lot to design, but... Well, if they know. were going to meet the end of uh-huh. October, they would have opened it by now. Mm-hmm. Um, and that again, to... I mean, when your choices are colors and wheels at yeah. this point, I mean, some some would argue, right. and I would make an argument, well, what do you need a design studio for? You can mm-hmm. do that over email or yeah. over a phone call. But, um, yeah, the fact that they haven't opened a design studio is indicative that we're looking right, at right. probably a few more weeks. So there is an analyst that did, that uh, is a 
decent ranked analyst if you if you follow that marketplace <laughs> i think he's in the 500 uh, range out of you know 4000 or something so not bad he did a report um and he's projecting that they'll make just over 3000 model 3s by the end of this year so including what they've built already in the launch event the the 220 for the last quarter so he's estimating around another 2600 between october 1st and the end of the year total cars that's what he's for model 3s mm-hmm. that's what he's predicting we of course hope it's more the oh, more I think the better be, i think it'll be more um, it probably we'll won't be 5000 a week but well no. it's a far cry from 80,000 that we've heard predictions and 60,000 <laughs> yeah, well, and you know we we publicly said around 25 to 35,000 so uh, none of us I think yeah. are going to be uh, be correct on these still predictions still early days but still early days <laughs> Um, some some other uh, information that came out uh, was the Model 3 First Responders Guide. I know that you did some tweets on that before yeah. and talked about it, but it's an interesting look at the architecture. If you just Google it, it should pop up. And it, it shows some great pictures of the powertrain, uh, the battery placement, uh, a lot of the safety features, including the high-strength steel reinforcement locations. So it's really designed for those first responders on, on how to identify the car, where to cut power, and how to how to do things safely in a rescue situation. I counted 14 airbags, if you count each part of the curtain as one, mm-hmm. but certainly a lot of airbags. So it's a, it's a great look at, uh, at that. Yeah, these also exist for the Model S and the Model X. Um, they're freely available on Tesla's website if you know where to dig for them. Um, if I find the link, I'll put it in the show description. You can look at them yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, it's, it's mostly for... Um, you know, for firefighters and stuff that are first on scene, you know, what, what to, you know, as I mentioned, what to cut and so on and so forth. Actually, one of the most interesting videos is I saw one a few months ago where they were at a trade show and they had a Model X mm. and they were cutting, cutting up a Model X and that was very painful to watch. Hey, poor thing. <laughs> yeah. At a hundred thousand dollar plus car. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, we can expect to see Gotta them do it on a Model 3 eventually, but to watch that's pretty painful. So I, um, just... I always feel that way when I see the crash test videos, of oh, uh, yeah. brand new cars. and off Well, I, at least you get to see how safe they are. That's exactly. good. But Cutting them up? Well, yeah. I don't know about that. All right, moving on. Autopilot 2.5 update came out recently, and we're talking about that because there is some significance to the Model 3 on this update. Um, there was an announcement that Model 3s need to be recalibrated uh, in order to take a, this Autopilot features to take effect. Um, and once that happens, Autopilot normal operation will be enabled, and some of the things like parallel and perpendicular auto park. There's a tongue twister. Boy, I say that <laughs> 10 times fast. It's a nice feature. It is a nice feature. Home link, auto mirror tilt, and automatic emergency braking are part of that as well. That's for all cars made all uh, cars. that have the autopilot. It's not just two model, package, Yeah, right? it's not just Model 3, but all mm-hmm. the cars that have model uh, mm-hmm. autopilot 2.5. So for those Model 3s, those few, the 220 that are, are out on the road, this should have been pushed through by now, I believe, mm-hmm. and be operational. And uh, again, you want to just remind folks about the whole Model 3 software. <laughs> I think, um, you know, there, there's show. been a lot of videos have been circulating yes. around on the internet, of course, and people are doing tours of Model 3. It's important that people need to remember here, the, the software on the Model 3, because there's a new computer involved it's not finished yet so if you see any videos online uh you know and you think there's missing features and stuff that's the software's not ready finished yet and they're they're actively working uh we've been talking to some of the um people who actually have these cars because you know they are members of the forum after all and uh they've been telling us that they've been getting regular software updates on the car you know uh, autopilot just got updated um you know so there's regular software updates coming out for the model 3 so they're working really hard to try and get most of the stuff finished up before customer deliveries begin so if you see anything missing don't panic it's it's coming so and as we've said ota is one of the secret sauces Uh, to tesla right they continue to come out with features and enhancements through the life of the vehicle and what we're seeing today in a model 3 ui could be drastically different in four or five years in a model 3 (laughs) ui as far as feature user interface has changed a lot over the last five years Mm -hmm. so which is and it's a good thing so don't worry about it so since we're talking about the software and the UI and the changes, um, let's address the big elephant in the room before we move forward on the show. Go ahead, Trev. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Well, so. look, we, it, it's really no mystery out there that um, you know people seem to know or, or found out that we have something waiting in the wings uh, about the Model 3. But um, we've decided to, to not release um, this information or the video until public deliveries begin. So uh, we just want to be fair to everybody and just let you know that that we have something that's it's, it's really, really good. Mm-hmm. And it shows the car in such a great light. 
and really gives you a lot of information that everybody's been asking for in a very detailed and you know cognizant manner. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, Ken and I have had a lot of discussions and uh, we think that we're going to wait a little bit longer and yeah. uh, release it maybe when public deliveries actually begin on the car. I think that's fair to everybody. Yeah. So uh, that's what we have to say about that. So you can stop tweeting and you can stop asking. We, we do have something. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. We will put it out. We, but we just asked for a little bit more patience, just yeah. a little bit longer, We've folks. Teased a little bit, but we wanted to let you folks know that we just we're going to wait till, as yeah. Trevor said, till we see some public deliveries uh, happening and, and and imminent. And uh, it's a very comprehensive video. Everybody's going to enjoy it. Oh yeah, I know. I there's a, so. it, it you know it, it pains us a bit because there's all these other videos that are coming out, and some of them aren't done very well, and they're not thorough, and they're not addressing a lot of the questions. So we've 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 put something together that we think is going to hit the hit the bells and answer all your questions. Mm -hmm. And as Trevor said, we'll just wait a little longer. So yeah, please so be patient. Appreciated that. Thanks. Folks. Thank you. All right, so moving on into Model 3, there's some accessories that Tesla just released. They have an all-weather cargo mat for the, your Model 3 eventually when you get it at 200 bucks, which is a pair, one mm -hmm. for the front and one for the trunk. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you can get that uh, roof interior screen as well that you can pop up and clip on, similar to what they've had in other vehicles. It pays, folks, if you want to pay attention and watch for Model 3 accessories uh, right now until we see stuff from third-party manufacturers mm -hmm. like EvanX or the others, um, to look at shop.tesla.com. That's mm -hmm. where you can find some of their apparel and so on and so forth. But they have three sections in there, S, X, and the Model 3, where you can look at different accessories. So they have, you know, the little USB charge cable or charging cables for the car, mm -hmm. the floor mats in this case, the screen. Mm -hmm. Um, there's some little uh, pigtail adapters for the new UMC and stuff. So if, if you want to see accessories, oh, the car cover too. So yeah, if you want ac cover, accessories, yeah. check that. I'll put a link down in the show, um, in the in the video description and you can watch those. But it pays to pay, uh, you know, to watch those, pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. Now there's a, an orange Model 3 floating around recently that's uh, uh, that's been detailed, wrapped, and that has driving around the U.S. And in fact, it was driving for a purpose. It was attempting a coast-to-coast -coast cannonball run and trying to set a record for the cannonball run from an EV perspective, not from a normal perspective. There are some faster times, but apparently... Uh, this recent uh, Model 3 Orange did a cross-country cannibal run in 51 hours and 17 minutes, which beat the old record by about 40 or 30 some odd minutes, mm -hmm. which is quite the feat continue, considering it, it is an EV that you do need to stop for charging. So, so that uh, just shows, uh, again, to a lot of people that we get tons of emails and questions about charging and time that I have to, is it really worth getting an EV because I got to stop and charge it all the time? We're here somebody's been able to cross the country in a pretty fast time uh, and in, in an all-electric vehicle. We may eventually see video from this, but keep yeah, in mind, this is an employee so. car, so they're not permitted to show anything. Right. So <laughs> right. we'll have to wait for some more information on this. So. Yeah, and it's unfortunate. Nice you know, color, though. It's a great color. Yeah, it's certainly... <laughs> it's almost, a wrap, though, folks. That's yeah. Not, that's not a stock color. It's almost kind of a copper, like, I don't know, like a... Orange copper. I've seen thing. different it's pictures really nice. of it. I mean, the yeah. picture that we have here in front of us, which may not, of course, necessarily match what we have here behind yeah. us, shows yeah. that it's very bright orange. And but I've seen some other pictures. It looks kind of. Mm -hmm. You remember the um, the 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 red shell that they showed at the delivery or yeah. the uh, at the reveal event? Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. at the gig. Yeah, that, that's more of the color that it reminds mm -hmm. me of. Yeah, yeah, maybe kind of slight, like you know, red, but a little bit of orange in it. Really quite attractive. It's nice. So if you're interested in doing Cannibal Run with your Model Three, <laughs> it can be done. Yeah. So go for it and let us know how you how you do. And continuing on with some Tesla news, um, Tesla, of course, in the Q3 call, talked about total deliveries. And we're just bringing this up just to show you some relevance of where they're at, specifically for our U.S. Uh, viewers uh, worried about the federal tax uh, rebate. Um, Tesla has shipped over 257,000 vehicles worldwide, and that's not counting any of the 2,500 roadsters in that number. Bulk of those, about 55% have been in the USA, about uh, just uh, under 145,000 cars. So there's still uh, 45, or 55,000 or so vehicles left for the U.S. Uh, federal tax rebate numbers. And as we said earlier, we're really hoping that Tesla can ramp up the Model 3 production to start so that you owners can take advantage of those rebates. Um, but, you know, it's going to take a little more time. So the sunset of that is still a good three to six months after the 200,000 Tesla is delivered in the U.S., so that's probably around July of next year before it's it you know the sunset becomes active. So there's still a ways to go for you folks. Yeah. All good news. Yeah, yeah, they could. Um, don't forget. I mean, they could always you know play with the numbers a little yep. bit in the sense of you know delay some Model S or mm -hmm. del X deliveries, mm -hmm. send them to other countries. I mean, there's several ways they can approach this, right. but I'm sure. Right. 
it's weighing very heavily on them and that's one of the reasons why they're trying to push so hard to get model 3 production up and running as fast as possible so yeah. that they can do the right thing yeah. i think elon either, either twitted or committed that they really want to maximize the rebate for as many owners he as did possible, tweet that right? out last so. year if i mm-hmm. i'll find the tweet i'll put it up behind us you can see that he's a, he's really you know alluding to the fact they want to do the right thing mm-hmm. for customers it is weighing very heavily on them yeah. but uh you know this is a subject that's been beaten to death you know so many times even our show and others um you know let's see where it goes but for now i I think you know there's still some room so not panic not panic time don't panic and some good news if you're interested in car insurance tesla is expanding their insurance program that's right now only offered in australia and hong kong and they've launched it in the usa as well and it's coming soon here to our country here in canada um, they've partnered with Liberty Mutual in the U.S. and Aviva here in Canada to provide that uh, insurance for cars. Some of the features include new car replacement uh, a warranty or, or a service, uh, rate guarantees, and of course using only genuine Tesla replacement parts. Um, I'm hoping that those rates are competitive because I'll certainly look at it when the time comes and uh, we'll see see how that is. Ooh, you know, that's, that's interesting you mentioned that because I've seen some other videos. Um, ben Sullins did one mm-hmm. too and I even talked to Ryan McCaffrey um, and they went and tried to do quotes and stuff and I think it was just on their website and, and the numbers are coming back. They're almost like double and triple what they're currently paying. So, mm. yeah, it's it's. We'll I think see. it's one of those things you need to talk to a rep and yeah. I've even heard some reports too that if you go online and you and you give them your information, I mean, they start calling you right away and yeah. start hammering you. Yeah. So just just be wary of this, folks, yeah. that uh, they may be collecting information. So just be careful. Mm-hmm. Um, probably best to talk to a rep directly and get a yeah. proper quote to get all the numbers to match up because yeah. they may be using numbers that are not in the system yet. I don't know. I don't <laughs> know what it is with Viva. That's not who I'm. You're right. insured with them, but I'm yeah. not. So mm-hmm. Yeah, my I, I, I did read that it's not Tesla store or, or Tesla uh, dealership reps that are actually selling it. They will refer you to an insurance, to either... Okay. Liberty Mutual or Aviva to get to a rate. So they're not doing it directly within the, the store. Well, supposedly, because Elon said that they wanted to do this um, to to make sure that the insurance rates properly reflected the value and the safety and exactly. all these other things of the Teslas, mm-hmm. which is one of the reasons they're kind of doing it. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, as you know, not all insurance companies are on board with the, with the safety factor and so on and so forth. So it varies by jurisdiction and area too. So it's interesting they're getting on this, but place to shop around. Yeah, so definitely do. And what would a show be without Tesla talking about their char- supercharger network and updates there? They've surpassed the milestone of a thousand stations worldwide, which is quite the feat. Uh, in North America, that is comprised of 454 stations. Uh, 416 are in the U.S., 29 are here in Canada, and nine in Mexico. 345 of those are in Europe and the Middle East, and 205 are in Asia, Australia, for those who love numbers. So that gives you a total number of 6,926 stalls or plugs. Um, So pretty good. You know, they set their goal for 10,000 stalls or plugs, I believe. Um, No, they've increased to 18,000. 18,000. And 18,000. By the end Correct. of next, year, the end of next so year. So they still have some so, work to do. So they have some work to do, but that's good. And we're as we talked about in our last show, we're waiting for that, that cross Canada network to set up. Yeah, so. they're supposed to fill in, you know, the prairies and you know, there's about eight yep. or nine of them going in yep. the GTA area. Yep. So. so uh so July of twenty twenty yeah, twenty nineteen, sorry. We're organizing a cross Canada road trip. Are we? Sure, let's do it. All right. I think so. We'll have our Model 3s by then, hopefully. Hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and the stations will be there. So yeah. that's, let's see. we'll see what happens. Okay. Come back to us on that one. Yeah. Now, there's an article that talked about Intel and um, NVIDIA and as far as Tesla changing some of the, 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 the computing power. Maybe you can talk a little bit more about that and explain all that. Out. Well, I did a video um, a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, um, talking about this potential switch from Intel to, you know, um, or sorry, from NVIDIA to Intel. And I think, and I did it because I think there was a lot of confusion on the internet because everybody's, everybody knows Autopilot is powered by NVIDIA. And I wanted to clarify the fact that Tesla has, up until, well, recently on the Model 3 anyways, but uh, on the S and the X, they use um, NVIDIA chips to power both the screens, so the main mm-hmm. MCU, as well as the, uh, the binnacle or the instrument panel. And then there's a third computer that runs the Autopilot system. And in the Model 3, they've, they've developed this new compute box that actually encompasses a new Intel chip system on a board uh, that runs the center screen and the, and the infotainment system on the car. And they have a smaller autopilot circuit board 
uh, and that has Intel chip or NVIDIA chips. Um, so that's where the confusion really is coming from. Um, and it, I think it also explains why the Model 3 software is not completely finished yet, because yep. when they go from the NVIDIA Tegra system, which is an ARM-based CPU, that's the same type of architecture you find in modern phones today, and they're going to an Intel architecture, it's a different instruction set. So they have to rewrite all the software. They have to rewrite all the drivers. So that, I think that kind of explains mm -hmm. why some of the stuff on the Model 3 is not finished yet. You know, everybody's talking about the lack of FM radio and streaming and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. So that goes a long ways to explaining that. Um, I would probably put some money on the fact that this is a switch that's probably going to permeate the rest of the cars in due time as well. Is it um, cost effective? Uh, is that one of one of the reasons for moves? They can get better value. Well, it's several from, things. I mean, yeah, you can look at Intel, it. From, uh, yeah, you can uh, look at it mm -hmm. from a cost effective mm -hmm. uh, situation. Yeah, well, one supplier will give you a better deal than mm -hmm. another. Mm -hmm. um, in some ways, they have to look, you know, five or six years out, of course, because don't forget the Tegra chips they've been using the S and the X. I mean, those are eight year old chips now. Twenty twelve, right? I mean, mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. no, they they pre they they were predecessors to that okay. too. So. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a long time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they need more compute power to do more things. So eventually, you know, you just run out of CPU cycles. So they really need something that's a little more fresh. So I think with the Model Three being designed from the ground up, really represents an opportunity for them to do something a little different. And uh, you know, in the last conference call, they said that they were going to bring the tech on the Model S and X mm -hmm. up to the level of Model Three, which insinuates that there's some new stuff going on in the three. And I think it's really this new entertainment system based on this new Intel chip. So. All right. Just wanted to bring up a quick, um, not not necessarily a rant, but just a subject about Tesla and the iPhone moment. I know we've talked about that a lot. You've been quoted many times uh, about the similarities for the Model 3 reveal uh, being uh, an iPhone moment-like type of event for the EV marketplace. And I 150% agree with you. It certainly was huge and it was a shift there. Um, so we believe that that was a very important event. And it does mirror the the iPhone, uh, uh, initial iPhone event that was launched uh, 10 years ago, right? Because we you know, Apple just celebrated the 10th anniversary. And if you look back, that changed the mobile uh, phone market, right? We went, uh, you know, smartphones did not exist at that time. The Palm Pre was probably the closest thing to it, uh, you know, from that perspective. Um, so with the EV market, all other manufacturers now have have woke up and they're they're working to enter and expand this market. And we report on it on every show that we've been uh, been doing since we started. We keep talking about 2020 as a milestone year, and that's <laughs> uh, that's predominantly for a lot of these manufacturers yeah. to play catch up, right? Now, and that's what they're doing. They've realized that the EV marketplace is real, and they need to go after it. Um, so Tesla, in our opinion, has a distinct advantage still at this time. Um, but we wanted to stress if they can deliver. And that's key, you know, seeing some of these disappointing numbers from last quarter on the Model 3, specifically with the Model 3. Um, you know, if, if it delays a lot, and I'm not saying if it delays another quarter or two quarters, but if, if they hit some significant delays in capturing, um, you know, the amount of reservations that they have, um, this could get, you know, give their rivals time for them to catch up and start, you know, chewing into that market share. Um, potentially even switching reservation holders who may not want to wait forever for a Model 3, even though we know it's, it's, it's a beautiful car and it's got a lot of great features. Um, so, um, you know, hopefully they can, uh, they can get through this potential slowdown they have right now and it doesn't go into the second half of next year or even beyond. Um, it's great that Tesla is doing other things. I know we talked about the pickup on the last show and the Model Y update, and mm -hmm. you know we'll mention the Semi in a sec. Um, and it's great that they're doing that. But I just I kind of wanted to go on record and say you know it's great that they're looking at these things, but Tesla, you really got to focus on cranking out the Model Three. You're doing well on your S and X. You've got a good streamlined uh, you know production numbers that are going and that are consistent, and your sales are going well. But the Model Three, you've got almost half a million back orders that you have to chew through, that continues to grow. Uh, the margins may be lower on the Model 3, but the volume is there. And you you know, you really got to focus on that. So it's great that they're looking at other things and we get lots of questions. When the Model Y? I want a Model Y. When's the pickup coming? We know nothing about the Model we Y. We know nothing about it other than what we talked about on the last show. But, <laughs> you know, they really got to gotta get the Model 3 going. So we're going to spend, you know, we're really going to be having our eyeballs on the production and, and closely monitoring that situation because I think there's a long-term impact to Tesla's 
viability. They're not going under anytime soon, but this is a strategic shift in the company and where they can take it to, and they've got to be able to take advantage of that. Yeah, they're under a lot of pressure, and I'm sure they really mm-hmm. know that. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I just uh, conducted a, a very, very informal poll mm-hmm. on on uh, on Twitter just to see where people lie You know, with this issue of a potential delay here. And, uh, you know, I got some interesting numbers back. 75% of the people said, I'm not switching, you know, Model 3 is for me. Yeah. And the rest of the 25 was really split between I'm undecided, I'm going to a Model S or an X, or I'm buying something else. Mm-hmm. And I know firsthand that some people are not waiting. Uh, they went and bought a Model S or they bought a Model X or they bought a CPO or they bought a Bolt or Volt or whatever, take your pick. But, you know, there are some people right. that, you know, their patience only lasts so long mm-hmm. with a reservation mm-hmm. because circumstances may change. I mean, look, I, I, you know, I got a lease that's expiring in the spring. Can I, yeah. and I need a car for business. Can yeah. I wait? Right. I don't know yet. We'll have to wait and see. Tax if, credits could change. Incentives well, it, could change. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Incentives could change. Yeah. Exactly. So everybody's circumstances are different. So we'll keep a really close eye on this, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's super important that they get production. I, I you know, I, I'm sure they're very aware of it, but I'm sure they are. So we yeah. just wanted to throw our two cents into the mix. Why not? <laughs> Can't just be Ben all the time, putting these numbers and, yeah. and synopsis together. We got to throw our, 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 our uh, minds uh, in there as well. So let's see, we'll keep monitoring it, see what happens. And I'm sure, as you said, they know what they're doing and they are doing the best they can to get those numbers up. But for those of you waiting for a Y or pick a Model Y or a pickup truck, oh, you're gonna be waiting for a while. You're gonna be waiting folks. for a while. Yeah. They've got to get these Model Threes out. So. Yeah. so there we go on that. And speaking of the Tesla Semi, well, we know because of the production delays uh, in the Model Three that they've pushed the event from late October into November. Now um, we're not going, so we weren't going to cover that. Uh, there have been some spy shots that have leaked out. Yeah, too. Uh, well, there's a photograph taken in California by a Reddit user, and it shows, um, you know, the cab of this new design. And I'm, I'm very, very confident that we're looking at, yeah, you know, certainly looks at like. at the prototype. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, just a few days ago, there was another video that was released, and it looks like it was taken somewhere in Palo Alto, or whatever. And it looks like, you know, there was a um, uh, a white semi truck with a packaged thing on the back, and I think that's mm-hmm. the battery pack, mm-hmm. and it really zooms off. <laughs> so I think what we're looking at there is the test mule, which is really just a, a regular semi truck with all the guts ripped out of it, and all the motors put into it, battery pack, and the inverters, and so on and so forth, so mm-hmm. that they can test out the the powertrain on the vehicle. So um, yeah, it's quite interesting. You know, I mean, these kind of things kind of happen once in a while. You get a few leaks and stuff, so it's going to be interesting. Pretty but cool. you know, Elon did say this thing really hauls, so we'll see. It's going to have to, <laughs> because it's designed for hauling, right? <laughs> yeah, and well. it's designed for regional hauling, uh, with a range of about 200 to 300 miles EPA. So uh, we'll keep looking at that and go from there. Mm-hmm. And recently, Tesla unveiled a new charging port. Um, this was uh, based on having dual connectors, both the Tesla proprietary and a standard Menenkes plug. Um, I'll just warn you, this is only in China for today. Um, but there's talk that they could expand this to other markets and support CCS. Um, what's your take on it besides the, the look of it? <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah what a design mistake this yeah, was well look i yeah. understand this is you know with yeah. short of redesigning the car the taillights other components i mean what choice do you have you have mm-hmm. to put another port in there um just so you know china has their own little char- uh, fast charging thing going on that's yes. not compatible with any other plug on the market yeah we don't talk a lot about china because they're fairly self-contained and their 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 electrification is booming i just yeah. want to add that they're going so they crazy have, there yeah so they have their own little thing going on mm-hmm. don't worry don't panic this is not going on any other cars at this point but i'm going to go back a little bit and just say that it this i think it's one of the reasons why we are seeing such a large charge port on the model 3 right because everybody was talking about wow that taillight mm-hmm. is so big and mm-hmm. you open it up it's got the small connector you know, Tesla is thinking in the future here, once this car comes into China, they're going to have to add this new proprietary Chinese uh, fast charging right. port. And, uh, you know, what better opportunity, uh, you know, to design a car from scratch that actually has this rather than this bodge mm-hmm. job that they put into the car. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But that's what that's what's needed in China. So that's what they've done. And, and it's what, a big market, yeah. right, as we know. So they want to be able to capture that market even more. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what happens. Uh, as you said, maybe there's something that might be down the road for the Model 3 and the, the mm-hmm. current uh, outside of China S's and X's. We'll wait and see. So an interesting article came out from our friends at EV Annex, uh, which we're always uh, monitoring, and they put some really good stuff out. And they, they've they talked about this um, comparison between the EV transition that we're seeing today and what it was like back in the early 1900s, I guess, where 
um, the, the uh, industrial world was moving, migrating from the horse as a main mode of transportation to the Model T, which was the first mass production, true mass production vehicle mm-hmm. uh, made for the masses, especially in North America. And it's an interesting uh, mirror and similarity that you can look at, uh, at from a historical perspective, what happened there. We just said you know, a few minutes ago that we believe that the, the Model 3 reveal was a quantum change, a shift, paradigm shift, I guess, if you will, in the EV marketplace, and has really helped to spur adoption to see the growth that we're starting to see. Um, and that was similar to how the Model T, when it first came out, uh, again, the first mass production uh, automobile that was there, trying to replace, you know, common horse and buggy mode at the time. Um, and that and, and it actually achieved replacing that in a short amount of time. It only took about 10 to 15 years. And again, remember, this is, some, this is a mode of transportation using the horse that goes back hundreds of years, if not thousands of years, um, as a mode. So for, for something to be pretty well replaced in, a short amount, in that short amount of time is a truly um, significant event. Um, and there were many hurdles at the time as well back uh, at that. There was really a lack of roads, right, especially in, in the U.S. and no North America. No fueling infrastructure. There weren't really. That's exactly. There wasn't much of a, of a fueling infrastructure or, or refinements in, in fuel. Um, the initial price of the Model T was off the charts. It was the equivalent to about 137000 U.S. Uh, dollars in today's money. So it was equivalent to that back then. Well, ba- so based on income. The, the initial. Well, yes. That's right. Yeah. Based on income, it was hugely expensive. Um, but, you know, ten, about 10 years later, it pri- the price dropped down to about 35000 U.S. our equivalent today. And the governments and oil companies uh, were investing huge sums into roads and other infrastructure Hmm, does that sound familiar? <laughs> Especially the infrastructure. Yeah. Um, because we're seeing that today, you know, with EV adoption versus ICE automobiles and what's out there. Um, so, you know, the Model 3 pricing being at that 35K uh, to start, and we know that you can't buy a $35,000 version today, but you would be able to soon. Um, similar pricing of other battery electric vehicles with the same range that are hitting the marketplace. We know that EV charging is infrastructure is ballooning because we talk about mm-hmm. it on every show and there's yeah. always articles about it. And we know that there's a lot of private and government partnerships that are going out there to invest in this infrastructure. Um, and, in, and, and in the incentives to help fuel it. So, um, you know, the convenience to be able to, be able to charge at home, um, thereby not stopping for gas, is a huge adoption motivator for a lot of people. And as we talked about in some other shows, once cost parity hits, it's we're game over. really going to see this, this hockey stick prediction. Yeah. And um, uh, the EV Annex model put a, put a couple of curves, uh, a graphs on there, which you'll probably put behind us. Yeah. And it showed that if there was fast adoption, that that hockey stick point would, would start in 2022. Uh, if the adoption was a bit slower, it could start in 2027. So certainly within the next five to 10 years, there's going to be a quantum change in, in EV adoption as far as ramping things up. And we're seeing that and hearing about it almost on a daily basis. Well, our thumb is on the pulse of this whole thing because that's what the show is all about. Mm-hmm. And that's what we follow. And uh, yeah, it's, it's it's showing up everywhere. And I think it just goes back to reiterating again that the tipping point has arrived on the manufacturing side. Literally almost every car manufacturer has announced electrification plans, but it hasn't arrived in the public's mind yet. And that will that's arrive right. in just a few short years once the products show up in the showrooms mm-hmm. and people are exposed to it just by the fact that they're sitting there rather than maybe hearing about it or not hearing about it. So yeah. it's it's coming. And it's good that we're seeing some of that public knowledge, um, some elements trying to get out there to, to do public knowledge. So, you know, we get out and do shows and mm-hmm. events with, with EV societies and things like that. Obviously, our Discovery Center we have in Toronto here is a unique type of element where they're, they're out there educating, solely educating people about electrification. Hopefully more of those will open up mm-hmm. in major cities and be able to 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 get people to come in and get those questions answered. But uh, it's definitely happening. So keep uh, keep your eyes on the market. It's, it's certainly things that are yeah. changing. And uh, countries that are, you know, we talked about countries, a lot of countries and, and areas that are considering banning uh, the sale of ICE cars in the future. Well, California looks to be considering that now. Obviously, CARB is working with the, the state government in considering banning that, it's following uh, what other countries like France, the UK, and Scotland are doing. Um, even, uh, I think what tipped, what the tipping point for them was when China announced that they're considering uh, a ban of, of, of 
ice and that's a huge you know oh, and, that's and huge that shakes you know the whole global marketplace from an automotive if china starts talking about that mm-hmm. so that kind of woke up california well if they're looking at it then uh, we should look at it because california does have aggressive um, carbon emission plans and of course they're uh, probably the first zev uh, state to have a zev mandate mm-hmm. a zero emission vehicle mandate so the ban could be as early as 2030 or it could be sometime between then and 2040 so we'll wait and see and uh, if uh, any of our viewers in california have any more information to send us or they hear something about that please let us know send us an email yeah but it's an interesting time for california switching coast we jump over to new york city there was an announcement recently that they've uh, implemented a new ev charging program um they've got some funding that will bring 50 fast charging stations or hubs as they're calling it uh, across all five boroughs in new york city Um, now each of these stations or hubs will have up to 20 chargers per site or so 20 plugs Um, and those deployments of those are going to be starting um I think they're starting late this year or early next year, and they're going to continue to be developed through 2020. There's that number again. Yeah, 2020. Uh, That's in partnership with Con Ed in New York City. It's a $10 million plus investment from what uh, we're hearing. Mm -hmm. So good for them. And also, I I found a little fact that I I didn't know, but New York State just recently introduced a new EV incentive of $2,000. So this is over and above the Fed tax credit Mm -hmm. uh, that you can apply for for longer range affordable um, electric vehicles. And those include the Model 3 or the Bolt. So I call it the 200 mile club (laughs) in in EVs. That's a good way to put it. Sure. So so that's just, it's great. Again, we just mentioned about incentives. So it's great that they're continuing with that. So. Mm -hmm. All right, let's jump into some of the other manufacturer news. Um, Volkswagen, they're still out there doing a lot of buzz. One of your favorite uh, manufacturers. <laughs> no, I like Volkswagen too, Dieselgate aside. Yeah. Um, the ID Cross 2 uh, was announced a little while ago, and there's a video that just came out, and we might be running it in the back here, uh, recently where, where a gentleman reviewed it. Um, he did drive it, but he spent a good 20, 30 minutes climbing around and talking to people and, and, and doing some functional testing of the car. Uh, that looks really good. It's got some interesting design cues. Hmm, minimalistic interior, dash, glass roof. Where, Where have we seen, we seen that seen before? That before? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so it's a it's a cool looking vehicle. Uh, we don't know how much of that will actually make it into production, but uh, as you've stated before, sometimes these things are way out there. But uh, it seem it has a, a, an interesting way of the doors open too on it especially well, the, concepts the rear are door. like that they tend to do they go crazy with the concepts but yeah. they dumb it down for production yeah you'll see here there's another segment coming up real real soon you'll you'll understand what we're talking about yeah but it's production bound uh and the u.s introduction should be 2020 there's that number again yeah uh specs 85 kilowatt hour battery pack uh, giving it an epa range of about 225 to 250 so definitely in that 200 mile club and uh, something about 30 minute recharging use, using CCS combo. So it'll enable some Good DC specs, fast charging. Right where so it needs to be. Let's just hope the pricing so is right. The ID crosshairs are right there, pun intended, are right there uh, in, for the EV market. So stay tuned on that one. And Smart, of course, we've talked about them before, but they are really gearing up and moving in, into and, and embracing electrification by. Being the the first automaker to make a complete transition to electric only vehicles, and that's kind of huge for them. Um, their their plans are to no longer sell ICE vehicles in the U.S. Uh, for the 2018 model year, uh, same as Norway, and they may have already done this in other parts of Europe, if I remember reading something earlier. Uh, and then they'll continue to push that throughout Europe and the rest of the world, starting in 2020, with no more ICE cars available. Um, that makes sense. I mean, they are urbanish transportations. We have our good friend who's come to many of our meetups who drives uh, a smart. He loves the car. It's he, his operating costs are so cheap. It's not funny. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's not a super long range. You really have to plan long range trips. But for an urban, you know, you're doing a hundred miles or less a day. Good car, right? I think so. I mean, my cousin yeah. just messaged me yesterday and he says, hey, I'm thinking about this because it makes for a cheap car for me to commute yeah. uh, to work and back. Yeah. Even buying a used one, he can still get some kind of rebate apparently mm-hmm. and it makes for a cheap car. So, Some good incentives. So if you're looking as a secondary vehicle beyond the Model 3 as your primary and you want to stay electric, the, the smart all electric could be a viable option for you if you're just tooting around the city or again in those instances where you just need one or two people to get around it, uh, it's a good looking car little grocery getter yeah and ford has announced that they're going to shift uh, their efforts uh 
one third of their efforts to electric vehicles. They've created a what they call a new internal team called Team Edison. Go Team Edison <laughs> to oversee these uh, electric vehicle programs, uh, shifting about one third of the company investments away from ICE vehicle investments into electrification and EV cars. And uh, they've uh, this is on top of their four point five billion dollar announced investment into the electrification market. Um, however, we have no updates from this article about any planned rollouts of EVs, uh, any new models or anything like that. Um, they did mention something about an all electric vehicle uh, CUV, so a crossover vehicle, mm-hmm. if I got that right, with about 300 miles of EP range planned for when? Come on, folks, say it. 2020, right? You got it. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're seeing a similarity. Yeah, there, there you go. So everybody's uh, jumping on that bandwagon, and Ford has finally committed some dollars and some. Uh, a little some late to the game, there. but it's but always are, good news to hear. Yeah, I mean, we've met a few, couple of, of Ford owners that have. I think the um, it's not the C Max; it's the the EV Fo- Discovery yeah. Center has mm-hmm. one of the uh, the Is it electric- Fusion or Focus. I think it's the Focus. Yeah. And again, not bad cars. Again, if, if it can fit your your use case of shorter range, and you know, it's not bad, but it's basically. A focus with just with an it's EV. a conversion for sure. It's a conversion, yeah. absolutely. But uh, good to see at least a Ford jumping into the game as well, and and we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. And last but not least, if you have eighty five thousand dollars USD to spend, well, you should be getting a Tesla X or an S. But if you if you don't want to do that, uh, if you're waiting for Porsche uh, Mission E to come out, uh, well, that'll come out soon. Um, there's some new spy shots that have been surfaced of the production body of this all-electric sedan uh, estimated about 250 mile of epa range uh, something about an 800 volt fast charger which could be unique to to this uh, car to porsche which gives you about 80 percent charging in only 15 minutes so it's it's excellent to see this technology leapfrogging and starting to to bring those you know stop times that we need uh, down it is important to remember though that even though the thing has 800 volts where are you going to charge it there mm-hmm. are no chargers other than maybe Today. in germany around right. the porsche right. you know headquarters where you can actually charge this thing so yeah. there's some work to be done on the infrastructure mm-hmm. to get to that so you know teslas are 400 volt batteries so uh, you know and they do that in 30 minutes mm-hmm. or so or 40 minutes whatever mm-hmm. you know take yep. your case but uh, no, it's it's good to see you know movement on that thing. Interesting to note there on the Mission E, it looks nothing like the prototype no, or the no. concept, which is right. <laughs> a little saddening. But it's you know it's expected. That's what car companies do. They show off these fancy mm-hmm. concept cars and then they dumb them down for the you know for the public. But it still looks nice. It looks attractive. I, you know, uh, good for Porsche. I told you you know Volkswagen, Mercedes. You're going to see a lot of activities from these guys. This is the first. Yeah you know, uh, example of a purpose-built electric vehicle coming onto the market from the Germans. So it's very right. encouraging. And they're also going to be offering it with over-the-air updates, similar to what Tesla does. So that's an interesting little tidbit somebody that got I picked the up note. on. <laughs> yeah, somebody got the note. So they, somebody's listening and saying, hey, this is something that uh, we need to be doing. So mm-hmm. good, good for them. I mean, we've always said competition is good. We like to see it. We love Tesla. We're supporters of it, obviously, but we like to see more competition. So good for them. Mm-hmm. And uh, that one is going to go on Late 2019, maybe 2020, but we'll see. All right, it's that time of the show for mailbag. We love mailbag. Love mailbag. Yeah, thank mailbag we time. thank everybody we for emailing today? us in. Got a few emails that I'll go through relatively quickly. We have uh, Gordon in um, Rockland County, New York. Thank you, Gordon, for sending us this email. He he talks about the 200,000 delivery number in mm. the U.S. and a little bit concerned about that magic number. Um, so he's just question again, asking about, you know, do you think Tesla will redirect some Model 3 deliveries uh, to help uh, owners for that? We kind of answered it earlier in the yeah, show. but yeah. Like, yeah, this is a common refrain, I guess. Um, every possibility exists that they may play with the system in order to maximize the tax credits. Um, unfortunately, we really don't have an answer at this point because they haven't made their plans really publicly known. All we can do is kind of read between the lines at mm-hmm, this point. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. but at this point, it looks like, you know, with 145,000 cars delivered in the U.S., they still have some room to grow. Don't forget, the tax credit is a phase out. Mm-hmm. It doesn't immediately drop away. It takes, you know, a quarter or two at the full uh, tax credit. So mm-hmm. if they can reach their production numbers on the Model 3 and be ramped up to a maximum amount, let's call it 5,000 cars a week, you know, could be less, could be more, mm-hmm. um, then they could really pump out as many cars as they can once they hit that uh, that threshold. Because... 
the threshold is only for cars actually sold. There's no limit to how many cars they can actually sell once they reach the threshold. So if right. they can make 200,000 cars, hey, people can get 200,000 cars at the full tax credit. Awesome. So it's yeah. important to remember, again, I, we keep harping on this, that just because the federal tax credit arrives doesn't mean that that's the end of it. It's a phase out and yep. they're not limited by how many cars they can sell after the fact. And it's about an 18 month phase out. So once they hit that 200, it's still 18 months of something until give it gets take, yeah. zero, give yeah. or take. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, Gordon was just asking because he's interested in maybe holding out for the, for the dual motor or all wheel drive mm. option. And that's why he's thinking how much longer that'll be. We don't know yet. About well, that. there's always a possibility because mm -hmm. I just got a tip yesterday um mm -hmm. and the video i just put it out uh tesla has been testing what appears to be an all-wheel drive maybe even a performance uh version of the model 3 at the track um the tipster who sent me the information said that there were three other model 3s on the track that were driving around and this one was noticeably faster than the others because when they go around the track they have a spot where they stop where they do acceleration mm -hmm. runs you and i both experienced this when we were at the track and this one was noticeably faster. So it could be that they're in the early stages of testing, you know, the dual motor variant or whatever. So there's always the slight possibility that they may put it into production a little sooner, especially if the production ramp goes better than they anticipate. Now, they keep saying six to nine months, six to nine months, which puts us into the spring. Mm -hmm. But there's a slight chance they may move it up a little bit. I don't know. Uh, like I said, this is just speculation. But it just shows that they're already, you know, thinking about the next thing at yep. this point. So anyways... Thanks for writing in. All right, what else we got there? Okay. All right, we have um, Tashi in Colorado. Thank you very much for your email. Um, Tashi is asking about the key card. Um, uh, uh, the Tashi is not interested in really using the smartphone. Um, is it required? Um, I guess the question is, do you have to have that smartphone activated by a carrier? Does it have to have a carrier service in order to work, or or is it just Bluetooth? Okay, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, without giving up too much information, uh, it's important to remember the key card situation is a backup. It is not the primary way of interfacing with the Model 3. It's really done with a Bluetooth connection that is like a little bubble around the car where it will actually unlock the, unlock the car. And, and Bluetooth is roughly a 30 foot, but it comes in. Yeah, depends, right? our mm -hmm. experience was... Let's just say Ooh. it's it acts very much like a key fob. Mm -hmm. Okay, so three feet, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. Get the doors unlocked, get into the car. Um, we cannot answer the question whether you need to use um, you know an activated phone with a carrier to 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 deal with the yeah, other things mm -hmm. about the car. Um, my guess is that yes, you will need that if you want to do you know things like climate control and honk the horn and stuff like that when you're outside of that bubble. With if you're inside the bubble, I, I don't, I can't tell. I, mm -hmm. I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. um, now, sense. as far as the key card is concerned, that's like I said, it is a backup. You can unlock the car. You can put it in a certain spot where it activates where you can drive the car. Um, but that's all the key card is for is a backup to the primary phone. So once the cars come out, and Tesla really puts all their cards on the table will know more about the, uh, the the smartphone integration but all is not lost uh, you know Android phones are pretty cheap you can pick up a used one mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> use that as your as your yeah. card and uh, maybe you can do some kind of tethering I, I don't know but uh, you know it's not like you need a thousand dollar smartphone just to operate you know the, right. the Tesla app so you can just buy a cheap you know smartphone and off you go mm -hmm. so so on that same, so thank you, Tashi, for that email. On the same type of question, we have an email from Tim, who lives near Washington, D.C. Thanks, Tim, for the email. And he's asking something similar, but from a different perspective. When you're exiting the vehicle, um, can you, uh, is there a certain range you have to walk past before it actually locks the vehicles and secures it? Um, and then the second part to that question is, um, if you have multiple driver profiles and both of those people are walking up with their smartphones, um, how do you how do, does the car choose which profile it's gonna set? That's an interesting <laughs> that's, one. That's a good. He question. says if he and his wife walk to the car, yeah. and they both have smartphones and they're both they've both set up profiles. I'm not sure how that works in the S and the X today. Um, so. Well, the S and the X don't forget they have key fobs. Yes. And those key fobs can be tied to a particular profile, two profiles, oh, okay. if you will. Okay, I forgot about that. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have the answer on the Model 3. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, don't know. Um, now, as far as unlocking the car when you walk away, like I said, it operates just like a key fob. Mm -hmm. Three feet, walk away, doors lock. Yeah. And there so. are options to enable and disable that. So you yep. know, if you want to use that, some people don't want it to automatically unlock when you walk up or 
lock when you walk away so you can enable and disable those features all we'll, all we'll have to say is stay tuned we'll stay tuned have, we'll have more information more on info's that. coming yeah exactly more info's coming. yeah uh, but thank you for the email. We have Bruno who sent us an email. Uh, he doesn't say where he's from, but uh, we've got actually two quick emails from Bruno. Um, one again is about the rear window and the defroster. Is it just a regular defroster that's on that rear yes. window? Yes. So obviously he's in somewhere that gets snow. So mm -hmm. so we can we can go for that. So the answer is yes. Yeah, it has defroster lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's there. Mm -hmm. It's nicely actually blended in. They don't really stick. You out, don't you know? actually. I'll, I'll mention this. Um, I'll just say this. Yeah. Um, you don't see them when you're driving the car. Mm -hmm. So you see them on the outside, but yeah, you don't see them. And then he, he uh, Bruno also asks about a video that he saw recently from uh, the OC detailing guys uh, about the, the vents in the front bumper to cool down the battery. Um, maybe he thought it was liquid cooling to maintain a battery temperature. So maybe you can correct uh, what those guys have said. Oh, no, it's the same system as if you look at a Model S or a Model X and you, you know, the car is charging or it's supercharging. Um, there are electrical louvers in the bottom that open and close just to regulate the heat exchangers that are in the front of the car. It is still a liquid-cooled battery pack. Model 3 is no different, so that's not a mystery. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the same thing, just on a different car. So, you know, if you're confused about that, sorry about that on their behalf, but <laughs> that's that's normal. That's just, yeah. just the way the Teslas are. <laughs> yeah, so when you're looking at, I, I think a good point to make on that last email is when you're seeing all the videos and, and comments that are out there, try to look for multiple sources, not just one, because uh, again, some people, we try to take the time to really understand what we're talking about. And, you know, Trevor has really understands the architecture and a lot of details about the Model 3 and Teslas in general. So he's a good source of information. There are a lot of other people that don't know a lot about how Teslas work and how they're unique versus other cars and things like that. So when they're explaining or showing things on a video, they may not do it justice. So just take that into account when you're watching and seeing some of these things that are out there. Look at multiple sources in order to get a better sense uh, to maybe answer some of the questions that you're looking for. And we hope to be able to address some of those questions really soon as well. Yeah, that's so, all we'll say about that. That's all. You stole my line. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, that's it for the show then. Boy, that, that was, went pretty good. We had a good amount of information to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about our friends, uh, DB Annex, in the promo. Again. Yeah, I just want to yeah. talk about the book again. If you haven't seen this again, this is a book called uh, Getting Ready for Model 3. It's written by Roger Pressman from the guys at uh, EV Annex. Uh, about 142 pages. If you want to know more about the Model 3, uh, charging in general, EVs in general, it's a good book. Uh, it's not terribly expensive. You can get it on Amazon. But if you buy it from Evanex on their online store, um, in the checkout process, they have a license plate frame. If you add that to your order, use the promo code called uh, for GR4M3, and uh, that will give you a $10 discount. So essentially, you get the uh, license plate frame for free. Just pay for shipping and handling. Um, anyways, we've read this book so many times. I yeah. mean, I, I really got to give it another read. Yeah. Um, it's quite good. Uh, it's interesting at the back that, uh, again, we'll just mention that Roger had made some predictions mm -hmm. about the Model 3 uh, production, and um, yeah. It's looking pretty accurate. <laughs> so good for Roger on that one. Anyways, yeah. big shout out to the guys at EvanX for doing this really good book. And you can contact us through multiple sources. Please keep sending those emails to m3ocshow at gmail.com. Yeah, don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter. My handle is at Model3Owners. And I'm at Kenneth Bacor. Yeah. And check out our website at model3ownersclub.com. That's our online forum. As we mentioned, we just surpassed 10,000 registered Fantastic. members. Thanks Lots so. of conversations. It's mm -hmm. growing like crazy. If you want, you can also find us on Facebook. Just search for Model 3 Owners Club. There's lots of Model 3 other things in there. We mm -hmm. tend to cross post a little bit, but the primary one is Model 3 Owners Club on Facebook. And don't forget to like and subscribe and hit thank you on the way out on our YouTube channel. We Please, really appreciate yeah. all of our subscribers. Yeah. Um, you know, and don't forget to click Much on the thanks. little notification bell in the corner. That's yeah. a new feature they added, and I forget mm -hmm. to mention that sometimes. Works well. Works yeah, great. Yeah. yeah. Click that, and then whenever we post a new video, you get instant notification. And lastly, I want to talk about Patreon. Yeah, don't forget our Patreon campaign that you can help support us. Uh, it does take uh, effort for us and time and some finances to help continue to put this show on the air and, and do what we need to do to get things done. So please uh, go into patreon.com forward slash Model 3 Owners Club. Yeah, we Did appreciate, that all, right? there yeah, we appreciate yeah. all of our Patreon supporters. Yes. Anyhow, that's it for today, Ken. That's and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Take care. See ya.
I like that. Can the EV transition mirror the horse to the model? Oh my god, really? Yeah, that's a, you know what? One. Let's just use number two. That's fine. Well, using number two, Trev. Remember. <laughs> number two. Or like Spock on. Yeah. Remember. A thousand stations worldwide. No, it's. F uh, oh, yes, worldwide. Sorry. <laughs> and then the breakdown. And going Let me do that again. Real. <laughs> blooper, blooper, blooper. We got to do something. <laughs>